Hey guys, Mars Thinking here, bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video. And so today, we are going to talk a little bit about the upcoming schedule for Global Dokkan. Uh, there are a couple of things that are going to be left as surprises until the last minute, because of course, things like Saiyan Day and the potential for another simultaneous Golden Week Dual Dokkan Fest with JP are obviously things that are, well, I was going to say possible. Saiyan Day is, of course, a definite thing. Uh, the same time Golden Week is a possibility. They did it last year. Doesn't necessarily mean they'll do it again. Um, personally, I think it was a good idea in terms of the units coming out as early as they did. So they didn't lose all their hype by the time they then get put out onto Global in... What did it used to be? It was like the August or September time slot or something. I think it was August or possibly even November when we would eventually get the Golden Week units. And they'd kind of lost all their hype by then. But I know a lot of people didn't like the timing of it being right after a Jewel Dokkan Fest. And then, uh, you know, up right quite close before the anniversary as well. But remains to be seen. But based on what we do know, uh, there are some things that we uh, can plan out. And of course, the big... Uh, the big real motivation for making this video is the release of the new anniversary LRs. So every year the anniversary LRs come out and pretty much they're the, new, the best new units in the game. Uh, I know some people like the five year LRs get a lot of hate now for not aging particularly well. And some people think that they weren't even the best units in the game when they first came out because of units like the uh, STR LR, MUI Goku, uh, not MUI, but just UI Goku. Uh, but the five-year LRs, it's safe to say they'll probably go down in history as being the shortest reigning uh, anniversary units that were considered like the best units in the game. But anyway, Gogeta and uh, the Blues, or you know, whichever you want to call them, the Gods and then the Super Saiyan 4s. Uh, I've been messing around with my side JP account. Uh, I might do some streams in the next week or so of just like working on it. Going, I've still got tons of events and stuff to go through. Actually getting to play with these units in the game, they are absolutely phenomenal. Like I'm sure you guys, if you are on Global, you've watched videos of them already. Uh, or maybe you have deliberately tried to stay away because uh, you don't want to cause yourself that emotional pain because they are absolutely fantastic but not only are they great units in themselves but they of course introduced this new leader skill meta you'll have seen a lot of people putting up videos truth minato a bunch of other people of uh, these units that are on either fused fighters or gt heroes or beyond super saiyan or movie heroes and on kamehameha because that means they get a 200 percent leader skill buff from these characters which means when you're running double leads they're getting an extra 60% to their stats than they can get on any other team in the game um, and I think Minato summed it up pretty well in one of his runs that I watched recently I can't remember which unit it was but it's almost kind of like that unit getting an easy A right like you're used to seeing that unit do a certain thing and now all of a sudden they're getting this massive extra jump up in like defense and damage and everything right so um, you know, this new meta with these new leader skills completely changes the game. Uh, obviously, some people take it too far, whether it's just memeing or just over-exaggerating or whatever. But the general consensus on JP is pretty much the case of if you're not running a team of units that are under this full 200% lead, then, like, you know, what are you even doing? Because these are the new best team setups in the game. So... Every year when it comes to this point when JP gets their anniversary, everybody comes out being like, well, that's it. You know, I'm not spending a single stone until the anniversary. Uh, I want to save up for global and have tons of stones by the time the anniversary drops, which is in July before anybody asks. People always ask every year. Uh, it's always early July. It's like the first week or so of July. Um, so you want to make sure you have as many stones as possible. So from the title, uh, I have talked about uh, you know, there is one unit that releases before the anniversary that I do think is worth summoning for. Even if you're someone who's free to play and obviously you're on the mad save until the anniversary comes out. Now, obviously, I've said this in a lot of these videos where we talk about summoning. If you're a whale or somebody who just will specifically summon four characters that you really like, then obviously, regardless of what I say in this video, you're probably just going to go ahead and do that anyway, right? But this is me trying to give advice to people who do need to be a bit more careful with their stones either because they are free to play or they just spend a very small amount 
Um, so this is to try and sort of help you out to have the best time possible. And I mean, at the end of the day, it's all RNG, right? Like, it took me over 4,000 stones to get Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta last year. So even if you don't spend a single stone from now until the anniversary, there is still the possibility, unfortunately, with Dokkan not having a pity system, that you could get absolutely shafted. But let us go ahead and have a look at the schedule in terms of the timeline for JP. So obviously things were a little bit out of order because uh, we've had the Kale and Khalifla and all this stuff on Global and the next Dokkan Fest should have been Trunks uh, who releases with the Heart Virus Goku. Um, then we move into the next month here. He did not have a part two LR because in the Trunks celebration we had some easy A's and then the version Z stuff came out on JP and then we went straight into Heroes. So it seems most likely that Trunks is going to be the next Dokkan Fest that we get on, J uh, on Global because he doesn't have a part two LR. Uh, that will then lead into Saiyan Day, which is uh, in like the second week of March, right? So the androids are out at the moment. We'll get the part two for the androids for the later part of this month. And then Trunks will probably release either at the end of this month or right at the beginning of March to lead us into Saiyan Day. So we have the androids out now on Global. Uh, the androids, of course, do have a part two LR which is the uh, future Gohan and Trunks. So that will probably release on Global potentially in like a week's time, right? There's a bunch of stuff coming out. We have these free-to-play Fusions Awakenings and then these OG Fusions Easy A's coming out uh, in a couple of days' time. Um, and then we should probably get, I think a week after that, we'll probably get the future Gohan and Trunks banner as the date for that is not in the files yet. And then once that banner has been up for like two weeks or so, then we will probably move into the Trunks Dokkan Fest. And then after that, we'll have Saiyan Day. Uh, then there was all these other fusions, Awakenings and Easy A's, but they kind of released at the same time as the Dual Dokkan Fest for Kid Buu and Goku. So I don't know if they'll keep these tied in with that or if they'll give us to the, uh, the they'll give these guys to us sooner because obviously we're getting a bunch of fusion stuff now. But I could definitely see this being tied into uh, this Goku and Boo stuff. So we'll get Saiyan Day. Then after that, we'll get this dual Dokkan Fest. And then after that, we'll potentially get the dual uh, Dokkan Fest for Golden Week with JP, which the rumblings in the community are that it's going to be based around the movie because that's around the time that releases in Japan. So there's a couple of unknown variables. But in terms of what we know is coming from now onwards, uh, we are going to get the LR, Future Gohan and Trunks. Now, legendary summon banners are always bad to summon on. Like, even if you are a whale, right? Unless you get really lucky. Like, the banners are always bad. Uh, LRs, of course, are the units in the game that have the lowest possible, like, summon rate. So it's very difficult to get them. Um, they'll probably do a ticket pack for this banner again, like they did for the Janemba one. Um, so obviously, if you're somebody who spends, you can pick that up and try for them without having to use stones. Uh, they are a fun unit, but... One of the things about a lot of these units we're going to talk about is their leader skill. Although they do give four key, they give 150 to stats. It's to two categories that already exist and are established in the game. So Connected Hope doesn't have a ton of leaders. Uh, Bond of Master and Disciple has quite a few. So if you're somebody that wants to save, and this is going to apply to a lot of these units, if you want to play around with this unit in the game, you can just run a Connected Hopes or Bonder of Master and Disciple team and then find an LR Gohan and Trunks friend. Now, obviously, that might be a little bit more difficult considering how the friend system is on Global, but that is a way for you to be able to use them in the game and see what they're like without you having to waste stone summoning for them. So after them, like I said, we should get Trunks on Global. Uh, Trunks is very good, but I think out of all the Dokkan Fests that we knew were coming, because we assumed Trunks was coming before the Androids like they did on JP, um, I'm not super, super hyped for him. Entrusted Will is an okay category. Android slash Cell Saga, obviously it is what it is. We've got a few leaders for that. Um, he is a very good unit. Bit of a weird design because the general consensus is that he's better in his base form than he is when he transforms. Because uh, when he transforms, he applies a bunch of status effects to the enemy uh, on the turn that he transforms. But he can't transform until he's attacked six or more times. So the only event where those status effects are really useful is Super Battle Road. But if you can't activate that until like turn four or five, 
a lot of the enemies are already dead at that point. So, very strange design. But in his base, he's really, really good. So, he is a very good unit. But again, if you want to try him out and mess around with him, you could run an Android slash Cell Saga team with, like, in LR Cell or something like that. And then run a Trunks Friend and just have one, like, rotation that is Cell with a partner. And then another rotation that is Trunks with a partner. And that team would work perfectly fine. So, another good way to save stones there. Um, and then, of course, we have the dual Dokon Fest. So, Kid Buu is Battle of Fate or Majin Buu Saga. Majin Buu Saga obviously has leaders and is a very, very strong team. Uh, STR Vegito has been one of the better units in the game for a while and has returned at least once. So, hopefully, you've been able to pick him up. So, you definitely don't need Kid Buu for his leader skill. So again, you could run him as a friend and just run a Majin Buu Saga team. There's a lot of good units on the Majin Buu Saga team that are split between running a super or extreme type units. And of course, LR Buu Tanks, whilst they're not perfect link partners, this is another really good rotation that you can run him with the LR. So now we finally get to the last unit here, which you've probably guessed. I mean, I feel like I made it fairly obvious from the design of the thumbnail, and some of you guys will have probably guessed it already anyway. But this is the one unit that I think you probably should summon for. Now again, this is based entirely around we have no idea what the Saiyan Day banner is going to be. We have no idea what the uh, you know Golden Week is going to be, and if we are even getting it at the same time as JP. Um, now one thing to bear in mind, of course, Saiyan Day... Int Broly, who I still think is mega underrated, came out for Saiyan Day last year and then did not return on Global for 10 months. So something you have to consider if you've pretty much already decided you're going to skip Saiyan Day banner this year is you may have to wait 10 months for that unit to come back again. So hopefully they won't make that mistake again, but bear in mind that that is something that is potentially going to happen. And then of course, you know, this Goku and Boo Jewel Dokon Fest is very possible that once this celebration is over, we then go straight into the Golden Week uh, Jewel Dokon Fest. But the reason why this Goku is the one unit releasing before the anniversary that I think you definitely should summon for is the fact that not only is he basically considered the best TUR in the game on Global, uh, on JP, which is arguable, it's between him and the androids, depending on your preference of play style, right? Like if you like a more defensive play, you like the utilities of like the Ghost Usher active skill ceiling, that kind of thing, then I could see why you would prefer the androids. If you like full on smash out damage, just kill everyone with, you know, double, triple, seven million attack supers, then obviously you're going to love Goku. Both of them are great. If if you put either one of them at number one, I wouldn't argue. They definitely both have their qualities that could make them number one. So there's not only that, the fact that he's like the new best unit in the game, but there is of course the fact that he is on the new teams for the new buffs. So he is on Beyond Super Saiyan, which is the leader skill for the tech God Goku and Vegeta. And of course he is on the Kamehameha category. So not only is he the best TUR, basically he's going to be the best TUR on Global when he releases. Um, but then when the anniversary rolls around, if you pull the LR God Goku and Vegeta, he's getting the 200% leader skill, which then basically pretty much cements his place as the best TUR in the game, because he's able to be run under a 200% leader skill, which the androids are not. Like, Super Vegeta is not, as far as I'm aware. Uh, well, of course he's not, because he's not on Kamehameha. Basically, any unit that's not on Kamehameha <laughs> is uh, probably out of the running now for being the best TUR in the game, because of this ridiculous new leader skill setup so not only is there the fact that he can be run on those teams just the fact that he is absolutely insane he has a similar transformation to str vegito uh 77 hp or less and it's only from the third turn rather than turn four so in something like super battle road if he's on turn one it's not very hard to lose 23 percent of your hp in the first two turns of super battle road and then you can go ahead and transform into Super Saiyan 3 Goku. And then he just becomes an absolute madman. I mean, he's got attack and defense 200%. Extra 50% buff when performing a super. As well as the 50% buff from greatly raising attack and defense on his super attack. He does immense damage. Has a medium chance to stun. Then he has a uh, two built-in additional normal attacks. That each have a 30% chance of converting into a super. Uh, then he gets a 70% chance to crit for the first six turns from when you transform. And then it changes to high chance. So it only goes down to 50%. So still absolutely insane, right? So this guy, absolutely nuts and can be run on 
the best team set up in the game. So this is the one unit that I think you should summon for, even if you are in the mindset right now of like not spending a single stone until the anniversary. I definitely think this Goku is worth summoning for, because if we think back to the Pycon and Janemba Jaldo confessed, not only will we likely get the, f no, well, it will be three plus one summons, but we'll likely get the first three plus one will be discounted. And then, of course, Global will potentially get ticket packs as well. So, again, if you're somebody that spends, you could just buy the ticket packs and not actually spend stones and have a chance at pulling this guy. Because, obviously, I'm not saying, you know, if you do want to save for the anniversary, I wouldn't go crazy on this guy and drop, like, a thousand stones on his banner. But... If there's going to be 3 plus 1 and potentially even discounted on the first rotation, I would say it's probably worth at least doing that first rotation and then maybe trying one after that. Because then you're looking at less than 300 stones for like 8 multis, which would be really, really good. So... Let me know what you guys think down below. What are your plans in terms of saving for the anniversary? Obviously, as a content creator, I will be doing summons on the banners that come between now and then. But honestly, I'm so blown away by using the anniversary LRs on my JP account that I probably am going to save. I'm probably not going to spend as much as I maybe would have if the LRs weren't that crazy. Um, I mean, to be honest, after the luck I had on the Janemba banner, I pulled him off the ticket summon, but then I did like a thousand stones on his banner and didn't pull any good LRs after that. So honestly, for the future Trunks and Gohan banner, I might literally just do the ticket pack and not even do any stones, but obviously we'll have to wait and see. Obviously for me, I, yeah, Saiyan Day could definitely be something hype enough to make me summon. Same for the Golden Week, Jaldo Confessed, but... Yeah, we'll have to see. I'm, I definitely want to go into the anniversary with a lot more stones than I did last year. So uh, let me know what you guys think down below and what are your plans for summoning between now and the anniversary. Is there anything that could change your mind? If there was a Saiyan Day unit that would absolutely change your mind, who would it be? Let me know down below in the comment section. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been The Master Again. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store. And I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.